Hi, and welcome back to this tutorial series where we go over the various options available to 5th edition campaigns within Fantasy Grounds Unity. In this video, we will cover the setup panel that starts the first time you create a new campaign and load into it. And the purpose of this panel is to provide you, the Dungeon Master, with a prompt friendly way of ensuring that your campaign session is ready to go when a player starts to connect to the server. As such, you will be presented with the first page of the panel as soon as the campaign session is loaded for the first time and subsequently each time you reload the campaign, unless you go and disable the check in the show on load option down here at the bottom of the panel. Now, as you can see, there are several buttons, all of which are meant to help you get access to the many resources that exist in relation to learning how to use Fantasy Grounds Unity from the user manual itself, the wiki pages, and the user forums. It also provides you with the first piece of information on how to ensure your server has the appropriate modules loaded that you'll be using in relation to your campaign. The next page of the panel links you to the various module options, and in some cases actually loads modules for you. The first button, the modules button here, simply loads the modules activation panel that you can also gain access to from the library category, the modules panel, and then down here with the activation button on the bottom right of the modules panel takes you to the same window. It's simply a shortcut to get you into the right location where you can choose what modules your campaign server will provide to the players, as well as what core rules you will want to load in advance of the campaign. For example, you can see on my screen that I have a number of modules that are available, and I can choose to load any of them that specifically that I want, as well as change the servable options for each module. If, for example, I didn't want the players to be able to load the Anti-Paladin or the Evil High Priest subclasses that are provided by the Dungeon Master's Guide, then I would simply go in and look for the Dungeon Master's Guide Players module and make sure that this little green checkbox is a red X, and that will prevent that from being loaded on a player's screen. In fact, it won't even present it to them if they manually go through and look at all of it, the modules that are available. Now I mention that here because this can and will be important a little bit later on as you can provide a shortcut for all players once they have connected to your campaign by telling them that they can simply load everything that is listed. Now if I return to the data modules section of the setup panel, there are four additional helper buttons. The first is the 5e SRD button and what this will do is it will load the bestiary, data, and magic items modules that are provided as part of the standard reference document published by Wizards of the Coast and is open to the community for use. Simply clicking on the button will cause your system to begin to load those modules and it can take some time because they're fairly large even though they don't necessarily have all of the rules associated with them, quite a bit of them are still there. So as you can see, I now have a summary of what modules it loaded and if I go into the actual modules panel here, you will see that each of those modules has in fact been loaded. But these particular modules won't be overly useful unless I also do the same thing with the basic rules button here, which is also the SRD package. This will load the basic rules as well as the basic rules for the player. So this one would be the dungeon master rules, whereas this would be those that the player will be able to use. Now I have all of the modules that I need in order to start up a campaign of my own creation or potentially be able to make use of an existing campaign because in some cases that will link back to the SRD rule set in order for you to be able to link to the appropriate magic item that you need, things like that. And I say that because if you don't own the Dungeon Master's Guide, Monster's Manual, or the Player's Handbook, you will need to load these in order to actually have certain items of a campaign link back to the appropriate item out of those data references. However, if you do own all three of those modules, you can simply skip loading these SRD rules and disable them so that the players do not need to load them at all, because that's what the purpose of the Dungeon Master's Guide, Player's Handbook, and Monster's Manual do, is they flesh out the full rule set associated with 5th edition. Now, the 5e Core Rules button here will simply go through and actually load up all of the rules associated with the 5th edition rule set, and this will include the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Player's Handbook, as well as the Monster's Manual and the Dungeon Master's Guide player module that would normally be loaded. And you can see that here on this DM screen. If, however, I click the exact same button on the player side, the only thing that will occur is that the Player's Handbook will be loaded, and in this case I already have it loaded. 
Now you may have noticed that the Dungeon Master's Guide Players module did not get loaded when I clicked on that Core Rules button, and that is because that is actually handled by the next button that we will go over in a moment. Additionally, if Core Rules are added at a later date, I imagine that SmiteWorks will take care of making sure that this button is updated to also load those particular Core Rules. Now, key, the key word here is Core Rules, not Supplements. Things like the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, for example, would be classified as a supplement, and we'll get to that in a second. The last option, 5e All Rules, which is something I've already clicked to hopefully get that to pop up before I finish talking, will load everything else that is 5e specific and provides supplemental rules, meaning it won't load campaign modules, only those modules that add in things like new classes, backgrounds, monsters, and playable races, as well as optional rules that a DM can make use of. But you might be saying, wait, I see Curse of Strahd player module there. Well, yes, that is correct. That's because it introduces new backgrounds and items that you can actually make use of. So that would be classified as a supplemental module. You may also notice that it also includes the Dungeon Master's Guide, Player's Handbook, and the Monster's Manual that you normally would have loaded using the 5e Core Rules button. So you don't necessarily have to click both. You can just simply click this one to load everything up if that's what you're going to play with. Otherwise, you can simply click this to load all of the core rules that you'll be using and then go back to the modules one to load up the selective few that you might be adding on top of it. But you can also see that all of the player elements that normally a player would be loading are also loaded. I don't know why that's the case because as I understand it, that's not supposed to be required by the Dungeon Master with the exception of the player's handbook. But it does it, so I'm not going to complain. Now, from a player's point of view, when you go ahead and click on this button, it will load all of the modules that the Dungeon Master is allowing your session to load. And this is why it is important for a Dungeon Master to go through the various modules and selectively disable those that they don't want the player to be able to make use of over the course of a campaign. If you're trying not to have an evil campaign, for example, be it a player playing an evil character in relation to one of the classes, you're going to want to go through and make sure that the Dungeon Master's Guide player module is something that can't be loaded like I've done here. Now, there is something strange going on with the Sword Coast Adventures Guide. I've sent something off to SmiteWorks about it, so I'm not sure why. This module is available, and it is enabled so that it should be loadable by the player, but for some reason, this doesn't load that up. And utilizing the campaign setup panel this way provides both Dungeon Masters and players a quick way to ensure that the bulk of the important modules are loaded in relatively short order. The last page of the campaign panel simply provides you with direct access to the options panel, which will be the focus of the rest of this series, but it has been placed here for your convenience to ensure you won't miss it. And beyond that, there is the finish button, as well as the previous button here that you can use to navigate back to a previous panel in the event that you forgot something. And that really completes everything that you need to know in relation to the campaign setup panel, so let's move on to the next topic.